Hi, welcome back to the show. I'm a passionate advocate for conservation, which is why I've donated so much of my own money to Hollywood's home for retired animal actors. Beethoven outlived Charles Grodin, and that was because of me. Rwanda also makes animal conservation a major priority. I visited animal sanctuaries to learn how Rwanda cares for wildlife. Rwanda is the country of a thousand hills. Hi, I'm down here. It's beautiful. The city is bustling, the countryside is vibrant, and the wildlife is bananas. You want some banana, little baby? This monkey I met also loves bananas. Now we're friends. And the reason Rwanda is a sanctuary for wildlife is because after the 1994 genocide, conservation became a priority. To learn more about grassroots conservation efforts, I visited Umasambi Village, a retirement home for gray crowned cranes. Oh look, an electric fence just like in Jurassic Park. That worked out fine. This is Deo Rumagabe, and he's the deputy manager of the sanctuary. So there are 15 species of cranes in the world. Okay. And this is the only species that we have here in Rwanda. And what makes them special? So crane in Rwanda is a sign of wealth and longevity. In America, that symbol is a yellow hummer. Oh. Yes. When you see it, in its wild habitat on the Jersey Shore, you're like, wow. But unlike the yellow hummer, the gray-crowned crane has become an endangered species. I tried to interview a gray-crowned crane, but ah, oh, that was bitchy. Anyway, these birds have become endangered because people are farming their wetland habitats and keeping them as pets. But the good news is Deo and his team are on the case. They rescue captive birds and bring them here, where injured cranes are healed and lonely ones fall in love. What is their mating dance like? They spread their wings, mm -hmm. they are up, uh -huh. and then they make some specific sound as well. Oh, this reminds me of the mating dance that I did for my husband. I just spread out my wings and I was like, ah, 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 ah. and then I do a little this and I give him the eye and I'm like, yeah. He was like, partners for life. I mean, you can see, it's irresistible. All this mating talk has inspired me to get a little gussied up. Oh, gosh. For our next stop, this is Akagera National Park, the coolest place I have ever been. I mean, look at this. There are running giraffes, galloping zebras, and me jogging. Look at that form. I mean, I guess the view is good too. We have zebras over here, giraffes in the distance. There's buffalo too! What is this that place? That is amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. And amazing happens to be Isaac, my park guide's favorite word. It's amazing. It's amazing. That's amazing. Amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Really amazing. Oh, Isaac. This park was founded by shitty Belgian colonists back in the 30s, and it was generally thriving until the genocide happened when, well, I'll let Isaac tell you. During the genocide, the country was not safe. So people used to come in the park and then kill animals. So mm -hmm. we lost a big number of animals. And okay. then the park was not protected during that time. So yeah. it was totally unprotected during the genocide. Yes, yes. And then when Rwandans started returning to the country after the genocide. After the government stopped the genocide, mm -hmm. uh, then they start to implement again conservation uh, strategies and then educating people around the park. That's when we started again to protect the, the national park. The park had lost all of its lions, all of its rhinos, most of its hippos, and all of its animals that make me act like this. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, God. oh my God. Look at this guy right behind the bush. Oh my God, I'm actually crying. We are very lucky to see elephant very close like this oh, one. Yes. Very closely, yes. So, and this is a sanctuary for elephants. You don't really have to worry about poachers here. Yeah, actually, the good thing is that, that the park is working hand in hand with the poachers okay. to educate them about the, the conservation mm -hmm. and also to support them in the infrastructure and then job opportunities. Okay so themselves they can also help the pack. I guess getting poachers on board with conservation actually works. Oh my God, a hippo! The male, they are territorial. Okay. So when they are fighting, they uh -huh. can also make some injuries to okay. the other males. So toxic masculinity. 
yeah. is rampant yeah. in the hippo population. <laughs> oh, yes. There are over a thousand hippos in the park, up hundreds and hundreds from where they started in the early 90s. Who knew hippos were such horn dogs? Oh my lord! Wow. Look at this! It's just standing there. Yes. Okay, I wish it was a little closer. Oh my god, I have such a good idea. Okay, okay. hold on. Hey, buddy, what are you doing? You get down. Okay. Hey, buddy, what are you doing over there? Why don't you come over here and hang out with me? I'm just over here. I love your knees. Mine are weird, too. I don't think that can work. Don't kill my dreams, Isaac. Um. I'm an animal whisperer. And Rwanda isn't just conserving animals that are native to Rwanda. These giraffes are from Kenya. We don't even take people refugees. Well, Rwanda is taking refuge giraffes. But now we have over 80 giraffes. You have over 80 giraffes. Yes. Well, I guess let's go count all the giraffes. Yes. One. <laughs> and all of this is possible because the park has figured out how to make conservation work for the community. So the park is supporting local community uh, by giving them 10% of the park income. Oh. We call it revenue sharing because we support their uh, infrastructures such as schools, hospitals, giving them electricity and also giving them job opportunity. Okay. And then also we educate people about the importance of the park so that we can work hand in hand together to help in the conservation of the park. And while giraffes, elephants, and hippos may not be native to America, we do have animals and ecosystems worth preserving. We've got Alaska, we've got bison, we've got that potato chip that looks like Jesus, and we've got all this pretty shit in Florida. We should just take care of it. Conservation is profitable and can create jobs, something we're told every four years is a priority. So let's put our conservation where our mouth is, and then one day our children will also be able to say, Look at all those zebra butts. We'll be right back. Aw, thanks for watching. If you'd like to hear more from Full Frontal, hit subscribe and visit our page for more videos. Or if you'd like to be radicalized, leave YouTube on autoplay.